everyone. Uh, my name is Jen Go. That is my real name. I think maybe there was an exclamation point on that. It, that's not there. No, it's just, it's just Go, G-O. Um, I'm from Omaha. I was raised in the suburbs. I went to college in Portland, Oregon, and now I live in Midtown. And like he said, I am the store manager and special projects coordinator for a shop called The Afternoon, which is right across the street. And I wanted to talk with all of you for a little bit today about community and public art. When I think about how I feel about things in general, I kind of imagine like a sliding scale where there's like positive on one end and neutral in the middle and negative on the other end. And there's maybe like a bead that goes back and forth between both sides. Um, and the bead kind of stops. There's like positive, neutral, positive, neutral, neutral, negative, negative. It's like you're taking a survey. Like I'm constantly taking a survey. Uh, life is nuanced and there's not really a whole lot that makes it to the far ends of my scale. Uh, on the positive side, what did I put on here? Dogs, universal healthcare, runs a fries. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why I like local plug. Uh, negative side, let's see, um, racism, sexism, uh, humanity's continued use of styrofoam. Yeah, the far ends of my scale are like soapbox territory. Uh, seriously, we, don't, we know that styrofoam doesn't biodegrade. Why do we still use it? Like, we know this is not a surprise. That's another soapbox for another time. My personal background with the holidays, Christmas specifically, I would say neutral to neutral negative, which is not that bad, all things considered. I'm an only child, come from a small family. Uh, my parents were the weird black sheep who ran off from the super exciting city into the suburbs of the Midwest to be weird black sheep together. We were like a little island, uh, so no big gatherings. There was no holiday schedule to keep. I grew up secular, so there was also no religious tradition to keep. You know, my parents did all the stuff. They did, they did good. I love them very much. They did good. We had the tree, we had the lights, I took photos with Santa. But, I don't know, somehow it never really registered as a big deal. Um, one Christmas, maybe I was in first grade, Santa brought me the most amazing craft object. It was this kit that came with glittery, like dough, not Play-Doh, just dough that you put into this little like extruder machine and you plugged in these sort of hollow, clear butterflies. And then when you hit the button, the clay went into the butterfly in this amazing kind of tie-dye pattern and you made yourself like this little object. And it took me about half an hour before I realized something was very wrong. One, you can't unmix clay. Like, that's it, you get one shot. Second, you, I couldn't even really get the clay back. Once the clay went into these little butterfly things, that was it, you could not open it. You couldn't take it back out. And I remember thinking, Santa did not think this through. <laughs> I was so disappointed. You know, this is a person whose job it is to make toys all year. And somehow this was just like a complete oversight on his part. And my guess is that I probably said that out loud. <laughs> I don't remember. But the next year, I got a set of Kinects, which are very practical. They're awesome. They're like Legos, uh, but you can do stuff like make like a working Ferris wheel, like an enormous working Ferris wheel, which is very cool. But my guess is that was probably the beginning of the end in terms of like childlike sense of wonder in the holidays. Um, and before I knew it, I was too cool for Christmas, an attitude that I carried with me well into my adult life. So, how did that person end up planning a two-month-long holiday event and enjoying it? Like, neutral positive to positive, enjoying it. Um, I would say it started with my job at the afternoon. Um, I know it's supposed to be the opposite story. Um, people are supposed to hate the holidays so much more after working retail. 
you know, it's like humanity at its worst. Uh, you know, everyone's stressed out and sick and there's like shouting and maybe you're like pulling on an object with a stranger. So how is this different? It is actually my ninth holiday season working at the afternoon. Honestly, this is like my super cheese line, but I totally believe it. I really think working at the afternoon helped to ground me in my community. It is a unique environment. For anyone not caught up in like the lore of the afternoon, um, we started in 1962 as an art gallery uh, by two people. One was a collector and one was an artist. They moved to the mall in 1969 when West Roads Mall opened. West Roads Mall was brand new. And in the late 70s, early 80s, our current owner, whose name is Marie Clifford, and her business partner purchased it from the original owners. Marie purchased it from her, what, 10 years later? and now remains like the queen of this like empire of local gifts. It's incredible. She's the main buyer. She goes to New York every year. They're going to Atlanta in January. She's a powerhouse. Uh, last year, our store turned 55 years old. I threw us a birthday party. You know, I think the store's roots in creativity um, are an undercurrent that kind of remain to its present. Um, the history in the city runs deep. I've met people whose families have come to buy things from us. I've had people tell me about the things that they bought from us 20, 30 years ago that they still have in their houses, lamps, art, purses. Our customers are overwhelmingly really awesome, creative, thoughtful people who care a lot about giving their loved ones unique gifts. And the end of the year is really our bag. For a store that sells amazing things and does free gift wrap, and for a dork who really likes tying dramatic bows, I think coming around on the holidays was probably inevitable for me. So Miracle on Farnham, as I understood it, uh, began as a way to promote this new development, Midtown Crossing. They had a lot of empty storefronts, and they figured that they could reach out to the nonprofit community to decorate those storefronts, bring people down to this area of town, and give everybody something to do during the holidays. Um, the winner, it was a contest, so the winner, at the end of that, I think it was maybe a month, month and a half, nonprofit winner would win cash. This event ran for three consecutive years uh, before they decided to try some new things. And every year that the Miracle on Farnham team chose a different holiday tradition, this insufferable only child wrote them like a three-page essay <laughs> on why I thought they should bring back miracles, like a college paper. I feel terrible now looking back on that. Uh, you know, there's a great variety of stuff to do here in Omaha during the holidays. There's all the lights, the tree at Durham, ice skating, the Christmas Carol, the Nutcracker. You know, I thought Miracle was special. For the afternoon, practically, you know, it drew people down to Midtown Crossing at night when it's cold during the holiday season to get out on foot. For me personally, I felt like there was a seed of magic there um, that really probably should be nurtured, which brings us to this year. Um, this past March, me, the CEO of the afternoon, and Marie, the owner, uh, sat down with the marketing team, and the marketing team offered me the opportunity to bring back Miracle. Yes. We kind of collectively decided to change some things, since it has been three years since we did this event. We wanted to increase the depth and variety, both in the participating businesses people up and down the street who were volunteering, and the creators. Um, we also wanted to try like a subtle shift of focus uh, for the community, more toward the community of visitors than as a contest for nonprofits. So I got out on foot and started to visit our business neighbors up and down the street. We have so few vacant shops now, um, and it was important to me that everyone felt included. 
and knowledgeable. I understood that not everybody was going to say yes, but sometimes it's nice to be invited to the party even if you know you're gonna say no. And I didn't want anybody to be surprised at the scope of what was going on here at the end of the year. Um, and just say that I had no idea that it was coming, nobody told me. And we also expanded our reach beyond nonprofits. We wanted to make a bigger impact, reach bigger networks, middle and high schools, small businesses, local artists. I made probably the world's largest spreadsheet of every art teacher in every area school whose information was available online. P.S. Uh, all of the OPS websites say like right up at the top, no soliciting, which I agree with. But I convinced myself that this wasn't really soliciting because this opportunity was way cooler than like somebody selling their washer and dryer. And all the while, I was trying to get as much done as possible because in July, I had jaw surgery, which was necessary but terrible and is totally why I have these sweet adult braces. But here we are. We made it. It's December. Um, there are 23 different windows representing 22 creators in 17 different businesses, from restaurants to retail. Even the financial planners got on board. Among our creators, we have well-known nonprofits like Goodwill, and Lords and Gardens, an AP art class, a neighborhood association, a therapist and her sister who is a middle school art teacher. As far as I'm concerned, Miracle was like 50% me sending emails at 2 a.m. But 50% was these amazing people. I put the pieces in place and it was a lot of pudding. But the creators finished it. Like, they made Miracle happen. They were also all, generously, compensated by Mutual of Omaha with a $500 stipend for building materials. I have a soapbox about paying artists for their work, too, but it's another one for another time. Honestly, I think the entire topic of public art is a soapbox territory for me. As far as I'm concerned, more art should be accessible. More art should encourage us to participate in our communities. More art should bring people unexpected joy. Miracle in Farnham isn't just this event right now at Midtown Crossing. It was the experiences of our creators. Miracle in Farnham isn't just this event right now at Midtown Crossing. Um, it's the experiences of our creators who sketched out ideas, sent them to us, gathered all their materials, built this stuff in their basements, loaded it all in in two days. A lot of them built these things in two days. It's the excitement in their schools and their neighborhoods, in their families and their coworkers, their far-flung out-of-state friends who you know are visiting for the holidays and they will be brought down here to see all of these things. It's the businesses and everyone who works for them feeling connected to something novel and entertaining. It's the people who we expect, who come down, who go out to dinner and make an evening of seeing all the windows. It's the people we don't expect, who came down here because they needed to buy dog food and they're looking at like a 10 foot gnome in a window and have no idea what they're looking at. <laughs> it is actually over there. The specific benefits of a project like this radiate into the community. But more generally, life is fuller and richer when we encounter creativity and design. That's why importing unex supporting unexpected endeavors is so important. So, when you can, I say, bring ideas to life. Be a steward of the time, money, or energy that you have that others might not. If we have the ability to connect people or create things that make our city a more interesting place to be, I think we owe it to ourselves and our community to do so. Thanks for coming out to Midtown Crossing today and Della Costa for supporting the arts in Omaha and for wanting to check out Miracle. 
I brought two of our creators with me today so they can talk to you a little bit about their take on the event. And I hope you enjoy checking out everyone's hard work. Thanks. I'm Mia Jenkins. I'm the director of marketing at Lauritz and Gardens. As far as I know, I think we're the only organization that has participated in this project every year. And it really has been a joy for us. And I mean, it's giving me the thumbs up. So pretty sure that's what got me here this morning. Um, we are the public garden for the community. We really exist for the enjoyment and the education for the community on a regular basis. Um, I look at us as a four-legged stool. We uh, work on plant conservation, saving plants for the Great Plains, educational programs for all ages, fun special events, and horticultural displays. And we're always looking for creative ways on a budget to connect people to the natural world and to provide them with meaningful and beautiful experiences in nature. And Miracle on Farnham's really been an extension of that for us. It, started with our tradition of the Holiday Poinsettia show. Um, I hope, hope many of you have been to that. The 20 foot tall poinsettia tree really has been kind of a, become an icon for the holiday in Omaha. We take a lot of time and effort to grow more than 5,000 poinsettias and 20 different varieties each year uh, to showcase the diversity of the plant world uh, to the public. and. I kind of like to say it's a horticultural representation of the holiday season, and that's important to us. And so the first year uh, with Miracle on Farnham, we constructed an eight foot tall poinsettia tree with live plants, uh, which we had to water for six weeks off site. <laughs> with that, we, you know, we also have holiday trains, we have landmark buildings, which are works of art in themselves made of natural materials. And, our team really works hard to try to come up with creative ways to take this tradition of a holiday poinsettia show, which could be very stagnant and feel the same every year, and make it different. So like this year, it's the year of the bird, and a lot of elementary school art classes made bird ornaments for us in a variety of styles. So you see yarn ornaments, and paper ornaments, and wooden ornaments. and. Um, so we try to connect with the community in a lot of ways as well to um, add something different to the garden that other people will enjoy and connect the younger audience with the garden so that they feel connected to the garden and to nature uh, for a long time, kind of establishing a tradition of feeling um, comfortable with both nature and technology. So in terms of Miracle and Farnham, um, I, since I work in marketing, we're always trying to find creative ways to connect um, to the public and to promote the garden with the constraints that we're given. And so Miracle and Farnham has been a, a, a fabulous opportunity for us. One of the things that's been very interesting about it um, is the challenge. It's been different every single year that we've participated and that's the fun of it, um, and that can be a source of frustration from it as well. Um, so the first year, we were assigned the entire space that is now Hutch. <laughs> it's a corner space. It was empty at the time, and it was huge. And so it was fun. We, we put the eight-foot poinsettia tree up. You could see it from both Farnham and, I think, 33rd Street. Um, we had uh, cut wood that we, we've had some felled trees, we made tree cookies for the whole floor, we um, put up a, a fun backdrop, we spray painted trees, um, it's like we, we worked so hard the first day and then you stood at the front off of Farnham Street and realized like you could see everything on the other side and we're like we need a ceiling because you could see up into the unfinished ceiling, you could see all of the can lights in the back. And detail is one of the things that's been driven into all of our, the employees at the garden for a long time, that you try to leave nothing looking unfinished. And so we quickly realized it looked unfinished, and so we needed to reorganize and replan. It was a great year for us. We, you know, we had such a huge space. We had a, f a frequency of watering off-site was kind of crazy, but it was really fun to be exhibited alongside our peer institutions. Like the first year, the install felt like a block party. So it was like next door you had Adam, the design team from the Durham who built exhibits, and you had our friends from the Children's Museum down the street. And 
so you kind of it was fun to watch the progress of everyone um, because we all provide something great for the community. Uh, the second year, everyone was given a pre-built box, so they were all the same depth. And one of the things that we quickly found with window displays is you're trying to create depth, even if it's only a few feet. Um, it really makes it more interesting to not just be like one layer. And so we had, it was like three feet, I think, back. And so everyone had a box and we worked within this space. Our theme for the show that year was the Victorian holiday. And so we used that theme in the window as well. We re kind of constructed our brick walls of the Victorian garden, which are another kind of thing that a lot of people recognize. We did some detail work with wrought iron, or wrought iron fencing there. We brought in the urn that sits in the uh, fountain most of the time. And um, we hired a hand letterer that was local to create some great lettering for the outside of our window. Um, and the hard part there was the depth, but also trying to squeeze through that box to water the evergreens and the poinsettias when we needed to. But it's a very fun, fun challenge to work with for us. Uh, the third year, we were at the afternoon, so we bugged Jen a lot. And that install was a challenge because you don't necessarily notice it from the street, but the window's actually like down from the floor. So you have to crawl down a ladder. And there's a space that's maybe like that wide and tall that you have to go through. So it's tall once you get down there, but we had to install everything, engineer it with in mind that you know you want to build a snowman, but you can't build the snowman until you get all the parts down into the box. So we did a ton of on-site assembly, and we're probably there way longer than she wanted us to be. <laughs> But that year we created a, uh, the theme was building and we, building traditions. And so we had just built a conservatory. So we kind of maximized on that and had that as a focal point of a snow vortex. You felt like you were kind of in a, in a snow globe of sorts. So we built a snowman, which was also kind of a shameless tie to Frozen, which was very popular at the time. <laughs> and uh, built a tree out of Lego jumbo blocks because that was our upcoming exhibit at the garden. And it was very playful and fun, and it didn't require us to come down and water all the time, which was a great decision on our part. But that was the challenge that year, is how do you create something, but then have to piece it out to get it in. So we did a lot of on-site construction. Um, this year, our challenge was, we did two windows. We're crazy. Um, <laughs> the first one is actually here in Della Costa. We have a a campaign going on where we are trying to eventually plant a million daffodils at the garden to really brighten everyone's spring and to become a spring tradition for our community. And we planted 50,000 this fall, which will, bl will bloom this March, hopefully, depending on the weather. And so this year our challenge was, it's two-sided and it's visible from both the outside but also the inside of the restaurant. So creating something that isn't in a box and um, also folding hundreds and hundreds of paper daffodils. Um, but that was kind of a fun, uh, fun part for us. Um, and then we also had a, happened to be the culprits of people, of the gnome. We, we, built, we used the gnome when um, my coworker Sarah Hankin had an eight foot gnome in our office. And we thought, hey, when you've got a gnome and there's a great pun that works with the gnome and the holidays, let's use it. So. We transported an eight-foot gnome in the back of a truck, which was pretty awesome, and uh, brought it down here for our second window. Um, and Sarah Hinken did the window graphics for, for both windows, and um, it really kind of creates the depth and the feel. Um, we tried to keep it simple each time, but also create enough interest that it draws you in, um, and also promote things at the garden. So. Uh, the, da the daffodil window here helps you kind of encourage to make a small donation to the daffodil campaign and the, the gnome window is encouraging gift membership. And so those are both very important and vital, uh, you know, don I guess funding sources for the garden and helps us to uh, continue to do more great things for the community. So we are incredibly grateful to Jen for bringing this back. Um, to me, the tradition of holiday windows like from you know, New York and bigger communities and 
in Europe. It's, it's just amazing to see what people can come up with. And I know they have way bigger budgets than we do, but we hope you enjoy what we've come up with because it's, um, it's a great creative outlet for our staff. We do a lot of different things that are creative on a regular basis, but it really showcases the talents of our staff in different ways, anywhere from our maintenance department who build structures to our horticulture department and then our, our marketing team as well. So we're grateful to, to Jen and to the afternoon, and of course to Mutual of Omaha and East Campus Realty, and then also the Bayer Foundation who provided um, prize money the first couple of years as well. And, um, we, I'm, I'm competitive, Sarah would tell you that. <laughs> we also have a tradition of being a recipient of prize funds, so we're really grateful for that too, that people have responded well and have really liked the window designs that we have come up with over the years. And so if you're so inclined and you like what you come up with, we're numbers six and 13, and <laughs> you can vote for our window as well. And since we're all friends now, right? We're all, we're all friends. So. Uh, th this weekend we have friends and family weekend at the garden so um, since you're my friend you can drop my name literally drop my name Mia Jenkins at the door and um, we're open from 9 to 8 and you're welcome to come see the Holiday Poinsettia show for free this weekend or Holiday Poinsettia show a glow which is our holiday light exhibit um, that's from 5 to 8 but we hope it kind of makes your spirits merry and bright during the holiday season um, after you've walked through the windows and enjoy uh, what everyone has brought to the table there so thank you so much All right. uh, good morning everybody um, forgive me for being a little nervous this is my first time here with creative mornings uh, my name is Ronnie Smith and I'll just keep going. No, no big deal. Work with the beat, Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> okay, anyways, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, um, a little bit of background. Um, I'm from Colorado, uh, born there, actually raised here in Papillion La Vista. Graduated in 2001, and I wasn't really sure what to do after, after college. I really wanted to stay creative. Um, I grew up with art in my life. Grandparents were very inspirational. Um, my grandmother actually did a, a lot of crafting, a lot of hand-painted, um, especially around the Christmas time, a lot of hand-painted ornaments. So that stayed with me, stayed in my family. So like I said, I graduated here um, from Papillion La Vista Schools. Um, my art teachers were great, that really stayed with me, and I kind of wanted to keep with that tradition of teaching art. Um, again, I still didn't necessarily 100% know what I wanted to do after I graduated. Um, I, I signed up to, to be a graphic designer in the United States Army, uh, served eight years in the Army Nebraska National Guard, and I also did a tour in Iraq for a year. Um, my job was actually Pretty interesting, something you don't really hear every day. Um, so keeping with that art, I signed up to be a multimedia illustrator, which basically meant um, I did a lot of PowerPoint presentation, um, did, a, did a lot of photography, which also helped me grow. Um, actually, when I deployed, um, I created hand-painted signs for the units that were coming in. Um, I mean, really, you gotta think about it. There's no nothing out there, can't make any printed signs. A um, lot of hand-painted materials, which was actually great for me. It was a way to stay creative during that entire year. Um, after I came back is when I started um, the opportunity with the afternoon. Um, that was in 2008, they were still at the mall. Um, I worked there part-time throughout college. Um, I was going to school to be an art teacher and to continue my creativity. I really wanted to teach other students um, about the process because it's really important. And after I graduated, um, still stayed with the afternoon, had some other part-time jobs there as well. Um, graduated with a fine arts degree from University of Nebraska at Omaha. 
Um, also with the K through 12 art education endorsement. Um, found out I really love teaching students, uh, teaching the process, you know, it's hard. It's hard for some of those students who have never experienced art before and to get them to love it. So that was, that was really my job, is to be an inspiration to a lot of students. Uh, after, after I graduated, I did get a job in Miller Public Schools for, uh, for a little while, uh, teaching middle school art to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. It was great. It was wonderful. Um, I still felt that I wasn't being as creative as I wanted to be. I uh, took an opportunity with my other employer, Whole Foods Markets, uh, to be a store graphic artist. Uh, at that time, it was, it was great. It was one of the best jobs I've ever had. Um, I was able to be really creative in hand lettering, uh, creating unique signs, creating unique displays for the store. Um, unfortunately, that job did come to an end. And, um, you know, I was left kind of feeling defeated after that. You know, your creativity goes down a little bit and you're wondering, how, how do I get back into it? And I know as uh, artists and creative people, you know, sometimes you can get in that situation and, and you know, it's hard to find that inspiration to, to pick back up. Um, for me, um, it was kind of a great opportunity to explore my artwork again and for looking for new opportunities to, to get my art out there. Um, working with the afternoon again, great. I, you know, once you can't ever leave the afternoon if you work there. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, that keeps calling you back. It's such a unique store. So if you haven't been over there, please go check it out. Um, so that helped me help you know get to know Jen a little bit, and you know, she presented this great opportunity uh, to participate in a window display, and. Um, it was a challenge. She gave me she gave me a nice challenging spot, which which I appreciate. Um, you know, thinking creatively and outside of the box. Uh, my my window is actually across the street at Culper Cafe. Um, if you walk by and see the the, the space is a little interesting. Um, it's about two feet. So again, creating depth and creating a window that's visually interesting. Um, again, was a challenge, but uh, I gladly accepted that and. I wanted to be a little bit different, um, a little more winter-like. I'm a huge fan of donuts, donuts, and um, my theme was created before the space was actually given to me. So again, when I heard that I got Culper Cafe, I was excited, love their pastries, love their donuts. So it fit really well into my theme. Um, my display is, is more, again, more winter look. There's fun things, there's some donuts in there. So if you walk by, you can see all the illustrative um, incorporations in there. So I really hope you do enjoy it if you walk by it. Um, my husband helped me a lot. Uh, he's a tremendous help, also a creative person. So we work really well together as a team. Um, I, I really want to just say Thanks to the afternoon, thanks to Miracle. Um, it was a really great opportunity to kind of get myself back into art. Because again, you know, you get a little discouraged and as creative people, it, it kind of happens and you have to find that process and get back into it again. So again, if you know you feel that way, you just have to find something that really inspires you to get back into it. But um, again, thank you and I really appreciate you guys listening to me and um, does anybody have any questions? Great, thank you.